I'll be showing everything I do to throw an 18th century themed picnic for my bosom buddy Ivy, aka the solo artist. As often as we can manage, we like to have a fabulous get together, often with themes to inspire us to work on certain projects. Last time we did a turn of the century tea, which you can watch here if you haven't seen it already. For this 18th century picnic, I'll need to make the supportive undergarments, which include a pair of stays and some pocket hoops to create the correct silhouette. Since spring has arrived, I've been pretty busy in the garden, so unsurprisingly, I'm a little tight on time. Instead of rushing to make something new, I thought I'd just alter something I already had on hand. Ivy made this wonderful gingham robe a la polonaise, which she has since grown tired of and she graciously gifted it to me to recycle into something I'd enjoy. Yay, second hand! My plan is to alter the front design into a zone front. This will allow me to make the dress a little more forgiving in the waist while also being cute and still period appropriate. I think that's everything for now, so let's get started on the undergarments. Oh, hi -ya. For the stays, I used Simplicity Pattern 8162. I'm not going to show every step of the process as the pattern is pretty straightforward and there are already many YouTube videos where people followed along this pattern, but I will mention some things that I chose to do differently. Firstly, I added more boning channels along the center front and back pieces. This was mostly an aesthetic choice, but the boning channels are more historically accurate and make the stays more structured. I transferred my boning channel lines with a water-soluble pen so that I can get rid of them easily later. I found Lauren from American Duchess's blog post helpful in deciding where I wanted to add extra channels. I'll have that post linked down in the description if you'd like to reference it. Here you can see the pattern that I ultimately ended up with. Before I put the bias binding on, I basted the bottom edge by machine. Afterwards, I chose to hand bind the bias tape as I found it easier to sew nicely around the tabs. For the boning, I used half inch plastic zip ties and a quarter inch synthetic boning. I am in the camp that feels no real difference between the two, so use whatever you prefer. I cut each piece of boning to the correct length and slid them in the channel temporarily, just so I could keep track of them. I will be smoothing the edges after I finish cutting all of the pieces. I find the methodical process of smoothing all of the bones pretty therapeutic. There's just something so meditative about repetitive tasks. Lastly, I changed the spacing of the eyelet holes from crisscross to spiral lacing. I also chose to hand sew the eyelets over using grommets as it's more historically accurate and I feel like the green color of the stitching adds a lovely touch to my stays.
Okay, now that the stays are complete, I just have to quickly whip up some panniers or pocket hoops. For this, I used Simplicity Pattern 8579. I followed most of the instructions as written, except I chose to machine sew one side of the panniers first before inserting the boning. I found that a lot easier than wrestling with the boning while finishing both sides afterwards. To alter my dress into a zone front, I started by tracing out the original center front opening onto pattern paper. Once I had those lines, I added a 1 and 1 quarter seam allowance to the center front. This will give me some room to stabilize the hook and eye tape closure later. Next, I changed the angle of the zone front hem to be more steep to match the zone front reference. Lastly, I connected the top of the center front edge to the waist edge. This edge will connect the new zone front piece to the dress. Once I had my zone front pattern, I cut out four pieces out of cotton broadcloth and two interlining pieces out of a stiffer canvas to give it more stability. I ended up cutting the outer fabric on the fold because I'm lazy. Wrong sides together, Sew the center front and hem edges with the inner lining piece and turn right side out. After removing the hook and eye tape, I matched the new piece to the front of the dress, folding the center front edge at approximately the same angle. Satisfied with the fit, I reattached the hook and eye tape to the new center front on the zone front pieces. Hook and eye tape is so satisfying. Now just sew the angled edges to the dress and voila, we're done. I'm really happy with how the zone front alteration turned out. It looks so cute and it fits way more generously around my waist. I added some new ribbons and paper flowers for some extra femininity. And for the final touch, I paired my outfit with some vintage thrifted gloves and my upcycled apron I made in my Making Bells dress video. That's all for now folks. If you'd like to eavesdrop on our conversation at our picnic, head on over to part two on Ivy's channel. The link will be in the description. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching our silly shenanigans. We are all out of Prosecco, so we will see you <laughs> next time. Bye. It's like studio direct, stop being cute. Go back to being official. You're pre stop pretending, yeah, stop that. So You're being official. <laughs>